Hello everyone, welcome to Tech Biology. This is Shubham, and in today's video, I am going to show you how to install Prometheus on Ubuntu 20.04 with Let's Encrypt SSL and authentication. So by default, Prometheus comes with HTTP configuration and with no authentication. But uh, there is the authentication capability inside Prometheus, but these are not enabled by default. So we have to enable them with some configuration settings that we are going to see today. If you think this process is a bit hard for you or you want to automate this whole process, then I have already created a bash script. You can just go to GitHub and my tag Goology channel and go to the install and config repository there. Inside Prometheus, I have listed the Ubuntu server there and you can find the script which you can use to install the system. And I've also uh, listed the switches here uh, which you can see in the readme file. Okay, so that's for the automation. If you like, you can just go here and use it for your automation processes. I've also created a medium blog for the same where I have listed all the commands which you can use uh, throughout this tutorial. And I'm go also going to copy and paste all the commands in this tutorial from this medium blog. Okay, okay, so let's go to my uh, machine. I have already created an Azure machine with port 80 and port 9090 already opened. Port 80 I will use for the Let's Encrypt SSL and port 9090 I will use for Prometheus. Okay, so let's get started with this installation. So, first thing first, I will first uh, switch to sudo user or super user and then let's uh, uh, do an apt update to update our repositories. I also want to mention that I have already created one DNS as well for my Azure machine which is something like this. This DNS I will use for the SSL configuration. Okay. And also to access Prometheus using this DNS. Okay. So let's download the Prometheus binary. Uh, normally when we install some software in Ubuntu, we install through app repository. But for Prometheus, this is not the case. You have to explicitly download uh, Prometheus binaries from this URL. The link is also in the description. I'm going to go to this same URL and I'm going to download the latest version in tar dot zz form which is for linux okay let's just copy this link and go to our terminal and i'm going to use wget to download this binary the download is complete and let's do ls here and you can see download is complete with the star file let's use the tar uh, command to extract this archive tar hyphen x v z f and the archive name Okay, so extraction is done. I'm going to uh, install Prometheus in slash etc slash Prometheus directory, but it's up to you. Wherever you want to install, you can install it there anywhere. Okay, so let's just move this folder that we have just extracted to slash etc slash Prometheus. So I'm going to use mv command mv Prometheus folder and then slash etc slash Prometheus. Okay. So the, it has already moved it. So we can just verify it using slash utc slash prometheus with ls and you can see all the binaries are there. Okay, so you can see there are two binaries which is prometheus and prom tool. We are going to use prometheus binary to start the prometheus. So if you, if you just want to install prometheus in its plain state, the installation is done. We need to just install a service that we will see at the end of, at, at the end of this tutorial. Uh, for now, let's just try to start Prometheus and let's see if it works. Slash. So I'm going to call Prometheus binary by using slash etc slash Prometheus slash Prometheus. I'm going to use hyphen hyphen config dot file as a switch and I'm going to pass this Prometheus.yml uh, location which you can see it is here. I'm just going to give the path here etc slash Prometheus slash Prometheus dot yml. Okay. If I enter, then it is saying no such file or directory because I have I have done a typo. So let's Prometheus and let's press enter. And if you see a uh, server is ready to receive web request, then the server is already ready. Just uh, as I have already told you, I have created a DNS for Azure. Even in this case, if you haven't created any DNS, you can just uh, type the address in the address bar. I'm going to call this URL with HTTP configuration because by default Prometheus is installed with HTTP. And I'm going to use port 9090. 
and i've already told you that i have whitelisted this port inside azure networking so that i can access prometheus if i press enter then you can see my prometheus server has started running and it hasn't asked any username and password from me and you can see it is not secure also because it is just plain installation we haven't done anything currently okay so let's go back to our terminal press ctrl c to stop prometheus and let's start installing the cert board command if we want to use let's encrypt certificates we need to use a client application which helps us in downloading the certificates from uh, let's encrypt and also uh, do the validation okay so for ubuntu we have cert board command line tool if you have watched my previous tutorials which are related to kibana i have used cert board also for ubuntu and i have used wacs command line utility for windows servers which generate the let's encrypt ssl certificates okay so let's install a uh, cert board in ubuntu just type it install cert board okay so it should install the cert board for me okay so cert board installation is done and uh, before we start creating the SSL certificates, just know that let's encrypt certificates are short lived. Uh, they can live only for 90 days and after that you have to renew them. There is no cost associated with that, but uh, th this is something that you will have to keep in mind. Certbot also gives you a renew command which can help you to renew these certificates automatically. Okay, and uh, if you uh, try to create certificates for a specific server and you fail for five times continuously, then you won't be able to generate a certificate for the same day. Uh, you will be able to generate the certificates after 24 hours or the next day. Okay, so that you should keep in mind. And we can prevent this blockage by using a dry run a switch. So let's first start the cert board with dry run. So I'm going to use cert board, cert only with hyphen hyphen dry hyphen run command okay so it will create a cert it will try to create a certificate but it won't actually generate it it will just test it if it works or not so i'm going to press enter now it is asking me to uh, how do we want to authenticate i'm just going to run a temporary web server i'm going to press one here then it is asking me to press enter an email so i'm going to enter my email press enter then uh, you need to accept terms and conditions yes and i need to enter my domain name i am in this case i am going to copy and paste my whole uh, website url okay and then just press enter and it has started the verification remember that i have told you that i have opened port 18 as your firewall that's for because uh, let's encrypt a standalone server will run, will start a website on port 80 so if you don't open port 80 in azure it won't uh, allow certboard to run the verification and thereby it will uh, it will not generate a certificate uh, as you can see in important notes it is saying that dry run was successful i can just now remove the, the dry run from the same command just press enter and then uh, apply the same values that we just applied press one for the standalone server apply your email address now accept the terms and conditions and it is asking me to share my email uh, so i'll say no for now and press and okay so enter the domain name again the same thing and please start obtaining the certificates one thing to notice that whenever you are generating a certificate it is it asks you for an email whenever your certificate is about to expire it will send let's encrypt will send you a uh, email uh, which which will tell you about your certificate expiration date and it will also ask you to renew your certificates if you want to continue using your website okay so in my case certificates are generated and you can see there are two parts mentioned which is one is for full chain and another is for private key okay so uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to copy these two files inside the prometheus directory i'm going to create one new directory inside prometheus so make directory slash etc slash prometheus slash ssl i'm going to create this ssl directory and i'm going to copy uh, both of these files into this directory let's just copy and paste it to slash etc slash prometheus slash ssl again uh, just copy the second file which is the private key okay so I have copied both of the files. Now the next thing that I need to do is to 
uh, create a new file which is called web-config.yml uh, which will contain our all the SSL certificate details and authentication details. Okay, so let's first do the SSL part. Uh, let's uh, touch a new file inside the same directory inside Prometheus web-config.yml. Okay, and then nano it, or you can use BIM uh, as per your choice for editing this file. Okay, so inside this file, if you go to my medium blog, I have mentioned uh, some data that you need to enter. This file is YAML, so make sure that you are, you are giving correct spaces behind your values. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste this same TLS server config into this file. Okay, and then uh, I have already uh, pasted the default uh, locations. So start file is slash etc Prometheus SSL and full chain, and key file is inside etc Prometheus SSL and private key. Okay, so I need to just press Control X and Y to save this file. And again, let's start the Prometheus. So I'm going to call slash etc slash Prometheus slash Prometheus hyphen hyphen config dot file, which will be my config file. Okay, and then I, I need to pass one more argument, which is my web dot config file argument. Okay, so in, in the same medium blog, if you go there, you can see this. Uh, uh, web.config.file value you need to supply there okay so i'm uh, pasting this switch directly and then i'm going to press enter if prometheus says server is ready to receive web request just go to the same url that we just opened previously and supply https uh, beside this okay so i'm going to call the same url with https configuration and then press enter and as you can see our https configuration is now applied there is a lock sign and if you go to connection is secure see the certificate you can see there is certificate available okay so as you can see also this is for three months only okay so my website is now up and running with https configuration the next thing that we need to do is the authentication part because prometheus doesn't come with authentication enabled by default the functionality is there but it is not enabled so we need to enable it using the same web hyphen config file okay so uh, just press Control C again. Now again, nano the same file. Okay. So I'm going to add one more configuration inside this file. Sorry, I have opened a different file. I need to open the web.config file. Web icon config file. Okay. I need to add one more uh, value here, which is the uh, authentication data. So if you go to my medium blog again. And you can see the setup authentication part. Uh, you need to create one password and you need to encrypt is using the bcrypt configuration. Okay, so just open this URL which is bcrypt generator.com. Okay, and enter any password that you like. So I'm going to press any only hello as a password and I'm going to click on encrypt. And as you can see, there is a password generated or encrypted string generated that I'll copy into my same notepad okay next thing that i need to use is one uh, username so i can use any username but by default i am using the admin username so i am going to press admin and colon and space so this is necessary admin colon space and the and your password is string if you go to my blog again i have listed one setting which is called basic auth users so i am going to copy this basic basic auth users value and paste it here enter give two spaces again to maintain the yaml integrity i'm going to copy and paste this this string which is admin colon space my encrypted password okay just paste it here and control x y to save this file and again uh, call the same command which we previously called uh, with web.config.file data and then press enter okay so now if i go to the prometheus website again and then uh, reload this page it should ask me for authentication as you can see there is a pop-up and in the username the username is admin that i have supplied and password is hello which we encrypted earlier and if i click on sign in and you should see like my prometheus is now loading and with authentication okay so we have set up the authentication we have set up the ssl and we have set up the prometheus so the next thing is the service like uh, you cannot always run prometheus with the command line you need to have a service so it can automatically start and stop 
whenever your system restarts. So I'm going to again click on Control C. I'm going to clear this uh, console, and again if I go to my uh, blog, and I have also listed one file which is for this service. Okay. So before we copy and paste this data, we need to create a service file. So before we create our service file, also we need to create one data directory. So this data directory will be used by Prometheus to store all the data that it, that it processes. Okay. So let's create one uh, data folder. I'm going to create one directory inside slash etc slash Prometheus, and then I'm going to call this directory as data only. Okay. So now let's also create our service file. I'm going to press. I'm going to type nano slash etc slash system d slash system slash prometheus dot service okay now press enter and then just copy and paste this data that i have posted in my uh, blog and as you can see we have an exec start argument which is saying we are going to call this binary with hyphen hyphen config file the our prometheus dot yaml file storage dot psb dot path is the path where we are going to store the data and the directory which we just created the web.config.file is the file that where we have supplied our ssl and authentication data web.listen.address and web.external url these are uh, applicable if you are not using azure what i have checked in azure or what i have observed in azure is that even if you don't supply these two values your DNS is going to map correctly, but for some other clouds, I wasn't able to do the same, and I had to provide this DCN address and external URL properties. So I'm going to replace my external URL, even in this case, with my DNS. Okay, so let's just copy our DNS and then just paste it here. Now the next is the web enable lifecycle. If you are enabling lifecycle, then then Prometheus will automatically clean up that old data and it will clean up the old data based on this value which is storage.tsdb.retention.size which means that whatever the data is, if the data is greater than 10 GB, it will clean up the oldest data first. Okay, so this is it for our service file. Let's just press Ctrl X, Y and enter. Uh, just to re reload the system CTL daemon. So that it can load the new service i'm going to type the command systemctl daemon hyphen reload okay so let's press enter it has reloaded and let's start our uh, prometheus service so systemctl start prometheus okay so press enter let's see if our service is running we just go to our url and then just press ctrl r and as you can see our prometheus is now running you can just verify it also if I just stop Prometheus from here. And this website should not load at this point. And as you can see, it is not loading. Okay, just to start the service again to verify. And also, let's open it in incognito mode to verify that our DNS is working or not. Okay. To verify that our authentication is working or not so i'm going to just press prometheus and it is asking me to uh, load it with https yes our authentication is working just type your username and password and press sign in and yeah everything is working fine okay so this is it for the prometheus installation if you have any issues in this installation do let me know in the comment section or also you can follow me on the instagram for the same questions and comments even you can uh, follow me on medium and you can ask your questions in this medium blog or you can uh, go to github and just create an issue there so i'll be more than happy to assist you okay so if you like this video then don't forget to rate comment share and subscribe my channel stay safe and stay tuned